Hello everyone and thank you for watching another one of my videos. Uh, this one's going to be another one where I'm going to be putting pictures up and talking about things so that, you know, if you want to see some specific details, you just pause the video and look at the picture. So if you guys wanted to see explosions and like body parts like legs flying and stuff, well I'm sorry, but this is going to be one of those informative videos. Uh, if you want uh, to skip to something that is of particular interest to you, I'll also put a table of contents down in the video description. Um, other than that, let's begin. So there's almost a sort of an age-old kind of question regarding fuel and octane levels. Basically, uh, people are saying the regular fuel is inferior to the superior fuel, and then some people are saying, no, it's not that at all, you know, it doesn't matter what octane rating you use. So I, I thought about this and... I thought the only way of settling this is to just try this for myself and see what's going on. So that's what I just did. Each month, so there were like three months, and each month I decided to use only one type of fuel, one level like octane rating. And then I tracked, I, I got all my receipts together and I wrote down how much the fuel costed, what was the total cost, how many miles I did in that month. Um, and so on and so forth and I just collected a whole bunch of data and then in the end I put all the data together and found out what was going on now what is octane rating? octane rating is a fuel's measure of how resistant it is to spontaneously combust when it's squeezed in the cylinders from what I understand anyway so in other words, let's say you have 87 octane and you have some sort of high compression engine like, I don't know, a Ferrari's engine, right? And if this piston comes down on the 87 octane, um, it's going to prematurely ignite and that's going to mess up the way the engine works a little bit in, in efficiencies terms or, or sense or whatever. But a higher octane rating then should resist from spontaneously combusting. So that means, technically, that the higher octane would have more power because there's a less chance that it prematurely ignites in the engine. So that means the engine could um, be more precise with how it um, squeezes down on the cylinders. Well, that's how I interpreted it, at least. So I found that 93 octane versus 87 octane, 93 octane does give you more power. And I assume this because it does give you a better MPG or miles per gallon. So maybe it doesn't help you with your 0 to 60 time, but at least you burn less of it for the same effect. That said, even though 93 octane is uh, more powerful it seems, it's just too expensive and it just doesn't make sense at all. Based on the gas prices at the time I was doing the experiment, you end up paying about two cents more per mile, I believe, for 93 octane instead of 87 octane. And that in turn adds up, you know, um, the short term effect, people realize, when they go to a gas station they fill up with 93 octane, they're just like, whoa, I went further, or that must have been better, even though the price was somewhat the same, but the fact is that there's a two cent difference per mile, so that means Initially, you don't realize that it's going to be costing you more, but on over the course of maybe, I don't know, 2,000, 4,000 miles, that really begins to eat away at your wallet like crazy. This means if you drive a car like mine, and if you choose 93 octane over 87 octane, and if you drive 2,000 miles per month, you're losing $40 each month. And, you know, over the course of a year, two years, that really adds up. That's a lot of money, that's a lot of gas that you could have used for something else. Additionally, I have found that 93 octane is only worth it if there is less than an 18 cent difference between regular and supreme or 87 octane and 93 octane per gallon. So that means if 87 costs $2, if 93 octane costs $2.17, then it's worth it. But we know that's not the case. They're often about, I don't know, maybe 30 cents or more in difference. So, basically, um, to wrap things up, 
Does 93 octane give you better gas mileage than 87 octane? Yes. Does this mean you have more power? It depends how you define power. If, it, if you're looking at 0 to 60 time, no. If you're looking at uh, how much power the engine gets from the fuel and how far it helps you go, yes, it gives you more power. Um, but is it worth it? Is it economically worth it? Is it worth... Do you save money by choosing 93 octane over 87? No, absolutely not. So it's just better off to buy regular fuel anyway. So now I'm going to try to discuss some stuff that I think is important that everybody should know. Um, my vehicle, for example, in the manual, the manual basically says you could use any fuel you want but we recommend using 89, but 93 is excessive and yields no benefit. So that means I could use 87, 89, 93, but my car, from what the engineers say, should be using 89, okay? That's, so you have to keep that in mind, because some cars, like, I don't know, I would guess the Toyota Camry from like 1980 or something, probably uses regular fuel and probably would not be too happy or thrilled or anything if you put special gas into it. On the other hand, a Ferrari or something or very something very sporty with a high compression rate ratio engine would needs the absolutely highest octane stuff because if you put any lower octane stuff you'll get like engine knock and mess things up and kill performance and so on and so forth. So you know each car is engineered a little bit differently. So obviously you should be using what's in the book. This will yield the best mileage and best power, typically. Another very important fact to consider is that we live in the modern day and age with computers and stuff. So each car has like a little computer and this computer monitors fuel consumption, um, air intake and so on and so forth and it works together to get the best mix. So what I interpret this is as the um, the computer ensures that the vehicle is maintaining its constant setup, stock settings or power or whatever. So when you pour 87 octane, it's going to burn more of that fuel to achieve, let's say, I don't know, 100 horsepower or 0 to 60 times 5 seconds or whatever. But if you pour 97 octane, um, excuse me, 93 octane, What's going to happen is the computer is going to look at that and it's like, well, this fuel seems to be doing better. And it's just going to use less of it to achieve the same results as 87 octane gas would do. So I don't know if I did a good job explaining that, but basically what's happening is the computer is scaling down the, um, the effects of this gasoline, I guess, to ensure that the same level of power and performance is maintained. So this in turn gives you better fuel consumption, but as I mentioned earlier, um, it just doesn't make sense economically because you're losing money. But assuming you have a regular car with a computer, this is probably what's going to happen. The computer is going to sense that you are, you know, that you need less of the gas, and it's just going to use less of the gas. So there's no immediate power benefit per se. That said, I wonder what would happen if you take an older car that like doesn't have a computer or you know, or still use like a carburetor or something funny like that. So, and gave it 93 octane. Oh, that might be interesting. So there's just some food for thought. And like I've mentioned earlier, for every car this experiment is going to be a little different because different cars require different things or they're built slightly differently and so on and so forth. But for my particular car, this is what the case was. Now, the reason I was doing this experiment in the first place was because I was looking at looking at this for the answer on the internet and like I said, half of the people were saying it's a waste of money and half of the people were swearing by it. So to me the only way to figure this out was to go ahead and do this myself. And on top of that, all of the experiments that I've seen on the internet, they were all doing this either for short periods of time and saying yes it's better, or they were not taking the data like I collected into consideration or they were doing something like they were hooking it up to an engine with no computer and they were running this engine in general there was just 
um, you know, everybody was doing experiments with this, but it seems I could not find anything about somebody driving for a month on each type of fuel and coming up with something. So in other words, everybody does like scientific experiments and stuff like that on, on YouTube channels, like, I don't know, people like, I don't know, Fifth Gear, did they do that experiment? I don't remember, but there are some big YouTube channels and they do some experiments and stuff, and all these experiments, to me, are garbage. So this way I actually got out there in the field and I actually tested this out myself personally. I kept all of the receipts, I've crunched all of the numbers, and this is the data that I've got. Now, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm hopeful that you find this um, informative or helpful or perhaps interesting. You know, I'm sorry for the long, boring video, but this was a very old experiment that I did about a year ago. So it's maybe not that very old, but it's an old experiment that I did. And I found this very interesting to myself personally. So I thought that today I just had the idea to make a YouTube video about it. So, like I said, I hope you guys liked this video and found it informative, and thank you so much for watching.